Hello, my name is Hans George Campbell, and this morning I'm out here in my shop, and I thought I'd show you guys this case right here that I recently picked up from my local Goodwill for 50 bucks. This case is about nine years old, but it's considered to be one of the best gaming cases of all time. This is the Cooler Master 932 HAF Advanced case. So let's get started with the review. So let's uh, take the case out of the box. Um, this case is about nine years old and it is considered to be one of the finest uh, PC gaming cases of all time. It's the Cooler Master 932 half which stands for high airflow and it's the advanced version of this case. So let's take it out of the box. Uh, yeah, take it out of the box. Oh my god. This thing's huge. <laughs> this thing is huge. It is really huge. Oh my god, it's heavy too. Jesus. It's heavy too. Best way to do it. Turn it upside down, pull it out like that, and set the box over there. And yeah, here's the receipt. I bought it at my local Goodwill for about 50 bucks. I've had it for a while. But the graphics card that is in my main computer, Ruby, it finally went out. And I tried putting in a new graphics card, and it's actually too big for my case. So, well, it's not going to be too big for this case. This is a full-size tower case, so, yeah, it's not going to be too big for this tower case. That means I'm going to have to transfer everything out of my other case into this one. But I'll do that off camera. Um, yeah, I'll do that off camera. I just want to show you guys the case because this is a really nice case. A very nice case. I just want to take it out of the packaging without damaging it. Man, this thing is big and it is heavy. God, this case is heavy. It is one heavy case. Anyway, put that baby in there like that. And uh, can you guys see it on the camera? Yeah, you ain't gonna see it on the. Right, get out there. You... Don't make me pull a soprano on you, okay? Yeah, get off of there. I don't want the cellophane tape anywhere near my vintage electronics. That would not be good. <laughs> Generates like, you know, a few thousand volts of static electricity. So, yeah. I don't want this tape anywhere near my... Oh, man, are you serious? What the hell? Yeah, I don't want this tape anywhere near my electronics. I'll put it over here. I'll throw it away later, but let's see. Is this going to come out of here? I mean, oh my god, how much tape they got on this thing. Shoot. God, look at that case. Oh my god. It's an absolutely gorgeous case. Absolutely gorgeous case. That's all I can say about this case. It's absolutely beautiful. Look how big that damn thing is. 
full-size tire case. I know some of you guys that watch this channel, you're not really into PC stuff. You're more into, like, you know, the vintage computer stuff. But I think some of you guys that watch my channel, you're also into PC gaming, and maybe you'd want to see a classic case like this. You know, this is considered to be one of the best gaming cases of all time. And I like the way it has, like, that military look going on with it, like somebody like me that, that enjoys playing first-person shooter games, you know? This is a perfect case for the Doom Master. That's right. Perfect case for the Doom Master. Oh, yeah. And I like the way the side here, it looks like a, I don't know, a gasoline can or something. I don't know. But it's got some cooling vents here on the side. This is for cable management. This is why they popped that out. And, okay, so that's the, the, the side of the case right there. Let me pull this off. Yeah, it's sort of like a, uh, a frosted, um, well, I can put that in my, it's sort of like a frosted type glass. Was that they got on there? Okay. It's got a huge fan. I think this is like a, a 240 millimeter fan. It's a huge fan. In fact, let me see if it says on the box how big the fan is. Um, let's see. It doesn't say on the box. I okay. Well, I know they're huge fans. They're like something like 240 millimeter fans uh, that are on the side here. Um, I think there's a large fan like on the top. I think there's three 240 millimeter fans. There's one on the side, there's one on the top, and there's one on the front. I'll show you the front of the case. Uh, well, I can show it right now. But, God, this thing is heavy. It is really heavy. You can tell it's made out of some steel. You know, this case is made out of some steel. Oh, yeah, this is not a cheap case. It's not a cheap case. Pull that off of there, yeah. Make it look so pretty. Make it look nice. I love it. Love this case. And uh, this part pops off, so you can replace the 240 uh, millimeter fan that's on the front here with like 120 millimeter, which is what I'm gonna. Do. Actually, no, this one would be fine because I'm gonna have four hard drives there, mechanical hard drives, and I want the fan blowing air over those hard drives to keep the hard drives nice and cool. Okay, and then it's got a rubber here, rubber thing up here that you can pull off. And there's a place up here, if you're using water cooling, you can pour in your fluid from the top here. Uh, it's, I think it's pretty cool. I'm just going to stick a, I got a, um, a Keiko Demon figure from Doom 2, a Doom 2 Keiko Demon, a Keiko Demon. Uh, figure it's about, I don't know, it's about this big and round, you know. I'm just going to have him sitting on top, you know. <laughs> He'll be guarding my gaming PC, you know. But, yeah, it's a nice case. It's got the USB 3.0 on the front here. I'm going to remove that because I'm going to use the, the ones on the back. And it's got USB 2.0 up on the top. You know, and of course it's got your microphone jack and your headphone jack. And uh, it's a very nice case. And then these, they pull out. You just press on the side like that. And they pop out like that. So it's, it's pretty cool. You know, they just pop in. I just press that right there and it pops out. But, yeah. I might buy that. You can get special filtering material for this stuff. I've seen it on eBay. And he cut it to fit in here. So I'm, I'm probably going to do that on this. Because I don't want this thing to become like a vacuum cleaner, you know. And just get full of, full of dust. I don't want to be blowing this thing out more than twice a year. Because right now, I blow my main computer, Ruby. Uh, I blow her out the beginning of fall and, and the beginning of spring. Twice a year, I usually blow out my main computer. Because she gets dusty, you know. 
Um, but yeah, this is a beautiful case. Absolutely gorgeous case. So let's take um, the side off. Let me move this box out of the way. Okay. And uh, let's see. We'll take these off. I, I like these thumb screw things here on the side. I think they're pretty cool. Put that there. Yeah, I think there's a 140 millimeter or 120 millimeter fan on the back here. Um, I tell you what I'm planning on doing after I get this off here. But there, let me pull this off. Yeah, I know this video is not perfect, but I don't care about that. But yeah, there's that huge fan that's on the side. But what I'm thinking about doing is I'm thinking about removing this fan. I'll, I'll keep it. I'll hang on to it. You know, I could use it like a fan to, to blow air on me during the hot summer months, you know. But I'm going to remove this fan, and I'm going to install uh, four of those beautiful... Um, 18 red LED fans because you, you can put four of them here. It's got the mounting holes for four of those 20 millimeter, those beautiful 120 millimeter uh, LED fans that I like to use, you know. So I'm going to remove the big fan and put four of those beautiful red, ruby red LED fans in there. That's what I'm going to do with that. And let's see what else we got here. Okay, so here's the inside. We got the box of whatever this is. Um, what's in here? I can't believe I found this case at my local Goodwill for $50. I mean, this is like a $300 case. You know, this is an expensive case. Even now on eBay, you can't touch this case, even in used condition. It sells for around between two and three hundred bucks on eBay. That's if you can find this case. Everybody wants this case, but they're not made anymore. But this case is so heavy that a um, a pack of these casters are included, so you can take the feet off and you can just screw these on. There's four screws that screw each one of these on. These casters. So the people that I mean, Cooler Master, they know how heavy this damn case is. So I'm put those up there, and then we got a a matching five and a quarter to three and a half inch piece right there. I'm gonna use that. Yeah, I'll be using that. Okay, so I'll put that up there. We got an extension cable here. I probably won't use that. We've got an extension cable. And we have a bag full of like, I don't know, full of like we got wire ties, you know, nylon wire ties. We got okay, these things are to put on the side of your drive. They stick on the side of your drives so that you don't see any silver right here on, uh, on the opening. Because when where you press your finger in to release those front plates. Once you remove that and you slide your drive in, if your drive has like an aluminum housing, like most of them do, like your CD and DVD drives, you can stick one of these on each side, you know, to make it blend in. But also has like, I think you use some of these screws to screw on the feet as well. So, yeah. So there's that. And let's see, standoff socket. It comes with a uh, these two little standoffs that you can use to help you assemble the case. You know, I thought that's pretty pretty cool. And there, that's it for the box. I'll put the box. Um, well, I'll put the box up there. And then we have the. I don't know what this is. I guess it's the Cooler Master Limited Warranty. Yeah. Yeah, the 
Cooler Master limited warranty right there. Okay. And I think it tells you all the shows you all the stuff that they make that they sell for this case. I don't know what that is. I'll read it later. <laughs> Who reads the manuals anyway, you know? Okay, and then here's the actual manual to that case. You know, it's the manual to that case. Alrighty. Okay. And, uh, okay, the inside of the case, it's got... I don't know what the hell this is. Uh, what the... Oh, that's a wire tie. It's got some kind of wire tie. Yeah, I think that's... The box was originally wire tied in here so it doesn't flop around. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's what that's for. Not a wire tie, but one of these twisty things. I don't care about this. I'll probably throw that away. But, yeah. It's a pretty cool case. I like it. This part down here, you can adjust it for longer power supplies and then this piece right here you can install a, a, another 120 millimeter fan if you're using multiple um, graphics cards you can add more airflow to keep them nice and cool you know and these are quick release I don't like these I'll probably be taking these off basically you push the button in like that I mean you slide your drive in and you push the button and it locks it in place. But I don't like that this is for lazy people. I'm not lazy, I'm not stupid, you know. So I'll be removing these. I actually prefer to screw in or bolt in my drives. Okay, that's just the way I am. Um, but yeah, there's that huge red LED fan on the front here. And I'm planning on, okay, I use all mechanical hard drives. I use four mechanical hard drives. The top one will be my Windows XP professional hard drive. The next one will be my main hard drive. That's Windows 7 professional. That's what I normally use even today. And the third one will be Windows 10 for when I'm forced to use Windows 10 for like online banking and eBay and PayPal and things like that. I'll have Windows 10 set up. And then my fourth mechanical hard drive is a huge hard drive that I use uh, for backing up my YouTube videos. It's mainly a backup hard drive until I get a chance to burn stuff that's on this drive to DVDs. You know, but it's my quick. It's for making quick backups. Like whenever I make a YouTube video and I finish uh, finish rendering it or whatever, I quickly copy it over. I leave it on the hard drive that's on, but I also copy it over to the backup hard drive. And the nice thing about having it set up like this, they're behind this cooling fan. And the fan sucks the air in and blows the air across these mechanical hard drives to keep them nice and cool. And uh, a mechanical hard drive, if you have it set up like this and you take care of them, you defragment them on a regular basis, they should last you at least 20 to 30 years. No, I'm not mistaken. I, I've never had problems with a mechanical hard drive, ever. I've, I have hard drives in my PCs that are, hell, over 15 years old, 20 years old. Like on my Pentium 2 build, my Pentium 3 build. I have old hard drives in, in them. They still run great. No errors on the platters, no nothing. And, of course, I've got SCSI hard drives in my Amiga and my Macintosh computers you know, my Commodore computers that are really old, they're like three decades old or whatever, and they still run great. Whereas an SSD, even a good one, only lasts for about, they last an average of between two to five years, and that's it. They're done. And that's one of the reasons why I actually don't like SSDs. I actually prefer a mechanical hard drive, a good quality, like a Seagate mechanical hard drive. I think they're nicer, they work better, there's less problems. I think the PC architecture is designed to work better with mechanical hard drives. I really believe that. Because I never have problems with mechanical hard drives. Ever. And yet, I have had problems with SSDs. Oh yeah, I have had problems uh, with SSDs. So yeah, I like the fact that it's got this big cooling fan that blows the air across these dry bays here to keep my nice... I mean, my mechanical hard drive is nice and cool, you know, 
and so they don't run hot, you know. But I'll be removing all of these. I'm not a lazy person. This is this is pure laziness, and I'm not lazy. So I'll be removing all of those. Because, like I said, I like to bolt in my drives, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, looks like there's plenty of room here for uh, cable management. Um, plenty of room, but I'd say three quarters of an inch behind there. So plenty of room to tuck your cables behind there. And you got plenty of nylon tie-off points for your cables, you know, so I think that's going to be good. I don't know if I'm going to keep this on there. Screw that. It's already starting to break. It's a piece of crap. I mean, that's just garbage. I mean, this is not that sharp. It's not that sharp. So I'm not worried about, you know. And there's not going to be any wires going through here anyway. This is just for easy access in case you got to change out your CPU cooler, you know. You don't have to take the whole motherboard out to do that. So that's another nice thing about the, this case, the fact that it's got that, you know. Um, but, yeah. And then these here, the back parts here, um, you just basically... Uh, you just press... It's like on a lever, and then these, they just come out like that. And yet even these have holes in them. So, yeah, this thing is definitely high airflow. <laughs> definitely high airflow. That's for damn sure. Uh, just put that back in like that. And voila, there you go. But I'll probably wind up taking that out, too. Again, that's for lazy people. I'm not lazy. I prefer to bolt my, my cards in, especially my graphics cards, because they're heavy. And I prefer to bolt those in. So, yeah, I'll probably be taking these out. I'm not lazy. I don't like this design. I, I've always... That's the one thing I hate about um, vintage Macintosh computers, you know? Uh, they're toolless cases, they're pieces of garbage. They're crap. You know, I much rather have a nice metal case that, that's, that you have to bolt together, you know, like an Amiga 2000 case. That's a nice case. Or the older IBM PC cases. Well, well any of the older PC compatible cases that are all metal, and you know, bolt them in. They had a heavy fiberglass or a heavy plastic front piece, you know, not this thin plastic like you see on a lot of modern computers. Although this one's nice. This case, I have to miss pretty nice. It's a very nice case. And I thought I'd show it to you guys because I just I just love the, this case. And, and you rarely ever see these cases. You rarely ever see these. These today, because this is nine years old, this case right here. But this case here, man, this part can come off temporarily because you can install a really huge radiator on top. Uh, and some of the bolt holes are underneath this, so this you have to remove if you're going to install a huge radiator for water cooling. And then this part, you know, you put back on. But it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. And I thought I'd show it to you guys. Um, it also has, I'll show you the back. Um, I'll show you the back. Here's the back of it. And it has inlets, I don't know, for water cooling tubes. I don't use water cooling. I think, I think water cooling is stupid. I think it's just a selling gimmick to get uh, stupid people that are filled with ego, you know, uh, to spend money on unnecessary crap. I mean, um, on average, I pay less than $1,500 for an entire computer build, something that I built. I build good quality computers, and they're strong enough to get at least 60 frames per second playing World of Warcraft. So they're not a piece of crap, and yet I spend less than $1,500, and I build nice computers. And yet these egomaniacs, they'll spend thousands and thousands of dollars on their computer. It has all the fancy RGB lighting and all this stupid, fancy, unnecessary, fancy crap that they install because they're puffed up with pure ego. They're stupid. They really are. They're stupid. 
And then they wonder why they're constantly having problems with their computer. Because they built it to look good. I build mine for performance and for quality and for durability. I, I, my computers, when I build them, they last for at least 30 years. Oh, yeah. I have cut repeat customers that anytime they need a new PC built, they always come to me. Always. Because they know I build quality PC compatible computers. And I don't charge them an arm and a leg. Okay? Like, for instance, the graphics card that I'm putting in here is this card right here. It's a GeForce, uh, a GeForce GTX 1060. I just bought this yesterday. I only paid $130 for it. That's it. $130. Bucks. And this card will work great for everything that I want to do, all the games I want to play and stuff. This card will work great. Absolutely beautiful. It's a lot better than the card I had in there to begin with. Oh, yeah. Paid $130 for this card. I'll show you the card. Very nice board. See, that's my my new graphics card that I'm installing on my computer. It's a pretty nice card, you know. And let me read let me read some stuff about this card. Um, probably gonna put on my goggles for that because my eyes are getting old and they can't read the fine text anymore like like I used to be able to do. So let me see. And this is the kind of stuff I look for when I buy something for my computer, my PCs. Okay. This has 10 years ultra-long lifetime. This, they're, they're talking about the solid-state capacitors that are in that graphics card. 10 years ultra-long lifetime. Extreme low ESR. Lower temperature. Higher efficiency. And then the high C caps that are on the motherboard, they're solid state caps. They're like tan uh, tantalum capacitors. Um, incredibly stable rare earth metal. Extremely high conductivity. Stabilize um, GPU power. Better overclocking. I don't overclock uh, my CPU or GPU. Only stupid people overclock a processor. Yes, you heard that right. And uh, it's so important I'm going to repeat it. Only stupid people overclock a processor or a GPU. Okay? I never do that. Yeah. Yeah, this is a really nice graphics card. It's a really nice graphics card. It supports um, G-Sync, DirectX 12. Um, it's, it's ready for virtual reality. Um, dual fans, and uh, it's also it also supports 144 megahertz monitors, which is what I do have. I have a 43 inch gaming monitor uh, that I use uh, with my PC, and uh, I think this should cut down on the screen tearing. That's the only reason why I stopped doing my painkiller game playthroughs because I was getting screen tearing. And so I'm hoping that with this new graphics card and with the new monitor, uh, the faster monitor, that I can eliminate screen tearing and I can continue doing the playthrough of that wonderful game, Painkiller. You know, that's an awesome game. And I want to do the complete playthrough of the main game and its first expansion, uh, Battle Out of Hell. So stay tuned for those videos. Those videos will be on my other YouTube channel, um, which is called Disc Based Games. So if you want to watch my me playing video games, uh, that's the name of that channel. It's called Disc Based Games. Just type that in and it should come up. But yeah. But yeah, this graphics card, um, this graphics card here was too long for the other case that, that my computer is built into and so I'm forced to use this bigger case here so I can use you know whatever size graphics card I want to use you know I'm not limited by space but just look at that graphics card absolutely gorgeous it's gorgeous man I don't want to touch the fingers 
But just look at that baby. Is that an absolutely gorgeous graphics card? Oh yeah, man. Just look at that. Oh yeah. Just imagine having something like this in your Commodore Amiga 2000 computer. Yeah, I'm just laughing. I'm, I'm just goofing off. <laughs> now, I have a nice graphics card in my Amiga 2000. Well, my Amiga 2500. I have a uh, Casa 2 board in there. I need to take a sip of my coffee. Take a sip of my delicious coffee. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's some delicious coffee. That's... That coffee is scrumptious. It's scrumptious! Alright, let me put my Amiga hat back on. I'll talk to you guys a little bit before I uh, end this video. Um, well, I can turn the case back around so that you can see uh, the front of it. You know, you can see the front of it. There you go. Alrighty. Have something to look at while I'm busy yakking at you. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty cold out in the shop right now, so um, I'm not going to be doing any more videos out here until probably the end of January or sometime around February. That's when I'll start making videos again out here because it's just too cold out right now. Um, the only reason why I'm out here now is because I was forced to replace the graphics card in Ruby, my main PC, because the one that I had in her, the fan finally, you know, froze up on it, and I, I got I had to put in a new graphics card, and so yeah, that's the only reason why I'm out here. But yeah, so I don't want you guys thinking that I've given up on my YouTube channel because that's not going to happen. I plan on making, like I said, I have hundreds of videos in the works. I have at least 50 to 100 videos just for 2021 alone. I have so many cool videos coming up next year that I think you're really going to enjoy my YouTube channel. I really do. Those of you that have described, I mean, subscribed to my channel, um, you're going to see some great content. And those of you that haven't subscribed yet, Maybe you should, because I think you're going to like my channel. Okay? Um, and by subscribing, it tells me, well, well, it gives me the incentive to to keep on creating good quality content for you guys to enjoy, you know, because you know, I see that people are subscribing, they apparently like what I'm doing, and uh, that's the only reason why. And plus, I'm an old man. I'm 62 years old, going on 63, and uh, I'm retired, drawing my Social Security. And so, if I can get a little bit extra money each month from YouTube, hey, you guys will really be helping me out. You know, helping old, uh, an old video gamer and vintage computer user like yourselves, you know, be helping me out, you know. Because those of us that experienced the golden age of computers, okay, we're dying off. And there's not many of us left. So, I'm not trying to sound egotistical or anything like that, but, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything like that. I'm just saying that when that day finally comes where I die, I can just imagine it. You know, God, did you hear the news? Hans died. What? What? Hans count? Yeah, he died. And it's just gonna. I mean, a lot of you. I know some of you people don't like me. That's fine. You're entitled to your feelings, you know. But I think a lot of you do. And when I finally do die, because we all die eventually, I think it's going to affect a lot of you. Hey, Hans died. What? From Hans Campbell? The Hans Campbell show? Yeah, he died, man. I can just imagine how you are going to be talking, like, in the farms and stuff. You know, I can just see the future. I can see it. You know, but before that happens, I want to continue to make videos. Because, you know, I've been involved with video games since Pong, which was the very first video game, and it came out in the 70s. So I've been 
dealing with video games for a, I mean, since the beginning, since the dawn of video games. I was there at the beginning. Okay. Um, and I've been working with computers since 1981. And I've, been, I've worked in the electronics industry as an assembler and an engineering assistant uh, for 25 years. So in all these years, I've gathered a lot of knowledge and experiences. And I thought to myself, it would be a shame to take all of that with me to the grave. And so I thought, well, why don't I create a YouTube channel so I can share my knowledge and my experiences with the whole world. So that's what I'm doing. That's the main reason why I created this YouTube channel. Because the videos that I post on this channel and on other websites around the world, this will be, these videos will be my legacy that I leave behind when I'm gone. This will be something that I'll leave for you to remember me by. You know, if you ever want to watch a video of old crazy Hans, you know, what the hell is he, what was he doing or whatever, you know. You'll have all these videos you can watch. And you can maybe learn some stuff too, you know. Um, next year I've got uh, part four and part five of the electronics assembly series coming up. Uh, the very first three videos that I'll be posting next year are the uh, about my Commodore uh, 286 Bridgeboard that's coming up I have forgotten about that and I think you're really going to enjoy my Bridgeboard series um, they will be the finest videos on the internet and on all of YouTube as far as the Bridgeboards that I promise you they will be the finest they will be the best they will be so good that other YouTubers will copy me. I'm not saying this to sound egotistical or anything. I'm just stating a fact. I'm stating facts. They're going to be that good. And you're going to really love them. You're going to enjoy them. Another video that I'll be posting real soon um, is um, I'm working on one of my Amiga 1200 computers. Um, right now it's stock. I just got it in, I think about a month ago. And I've decided to use it for sound tracker and MIDI and stuff like that. Um, but it's got Kickstart 3.0 in it. And it's got the old, what, 50 megabyte hard drive in it, you know. So I'm going to show me upgrading that computer right here on my workbench. I'm going to install Kickstart 3.1 ROMs. I'm going to install a, uh, a compact flash card adapter that looks like a laptop hard drive oh yeah it's really cool and you just bolt it in you remove the original 50 megabyte hard drive okay from the Amiga 1200 cradle the hard drive cradle and you bolt on this compact flash adapter you bolt it onto the same cradle it looks like a hard drive but you just plug in a compact flash card okay and you plug in the ribbon cable from the motherboard into the back and it's, it's just perfect you know I can leave the heat sh I mean the um, the shield on it, RF shield on it, because I do use my Amiga 1200 with a Commodore 1084S monitor, and the games and stuff look really good, and my workbench looks really good on that monitor. So, yeah, I've been working on my Amiga 1200, and I, I was really impressed with um, uh, a video that Miss Mad Lemon made where she showed. Um, how she composes music on Sound Tracker, using Sound Tracker, with her Amiga 1200. And it showed how she hooked up, like, I think she was using a, uh, an 8-bit uh, audio digitizer for getting the samples in to Sound Tracker. And then it showed, uh, she had a couple of Yamaha MIDI keyboards, and she was really excited about the new one that she got, the white one that she got. I, I thought it was really cool. And she showed how she used that setup to easily compose music in Soundtracker. And I thought that was really cool. And so I want to do the same thing um, with this Amiga 1200 that I got last month. I want to set something up like that, MIDI keyboard and, 
and sound ditch hyzer, all that stuff. You know, that's what I want to do. Um, yeah, it sounds like the garbage truck is running outside and picking up people's garbage because this is Wednesday and it's garbage day. So ignore the, uh, the sound in the background. Okay. But yeah, I want to do that. And I, Miss Madeline cracked me up. She did because, oh my God. She loves her cat. I mean, she actually has a beautiful cat. I think it's a black cat. I love black cats. But she has this smoking apparatus. It looks like something that the caterpillar that was sitting on top of the mushroom in Alice in Wonderland was smoking on. I thought that was just something out of a fairy tale. I didn't think they existed. But she has one. And on that video, she was showing how she heats up these, these two cubes to like a gray color on a Bunsen burner or whatever. And she puts those cubes in the middle of the top part of the smoking apparatus, right? And then she has this can of looks like high quality tobacco or whatever is in that can. It's like orange red color. And then how she packed that stuff on the top around those cubes. She put the lid on and adjusted the venting just so perfectly. And then it had like blue liquid on the bottom. And as she was smoking it, it was bubbling. It has this long, like three or four, I don't know, probably six foot long hose coming out of it. With, with, with a, a mouthpiece. And while she was sitting there composing her music and taking a sip from her tea and her tulip glasses. I wish she sent me some of those tulip glasses. I love those tulip glasses, you know, because I like tea as well. But I think she, she had coffee in hers. Because sometimes she drinks coffee like I do. And, and, and she was busy smoke, I mean, smoking through this thing and the bubbling going on, you know. And she's composing the music and stuff, you know. You could tell she's really getting into this smoking and the music. I'm thinking, oh my God, that's my kind of woman right there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, she's funny. She's talented. She's artistic. Beautiful. Sexy. But enough of that. I don't want to make her feel uneasy, you know. <laughs> I don't, you know, but yeah, I thought that channel was, um, I mean, that video was really cool. And I never seen anything like that. That smoking apparatus that she was smoking. I never seen anything like that. I thought it was like in that fairy tale or something. But she actually has one and she's smoking it. Oh yeah, she should do a video just on that. Because I'm curious about that. What the hell is that? How do you use it? What's it for? You know, what's this bubbling blue liquid going on, you know? But, yeah, enough of that. But she cracks me up with some of her videos. Like the time when she was uh, um, spray painting her Amiga 1200 with that uh, Metal Flake blue color. You know, you could tell she was really excited because she was just prancing around, bouncing around in her blue jeans or whatever, you know, and spray paint, having a good old time spray painting the case and, you know, spray painting the black keys, you know, black, you know, and then peeling these stickers and sticking them on top of the keys and how she was saying, man, this is frickin' tedious, you know, frickin' tedious. And I agree with her. It is tedious. Anytime you got to refurbish a keyboard, oh, yeah, I hate that. That's the main thing I hate about... Anytime I got a refurbish like a Commodore 64 or an Atari or an Amiga computer keyboard or whatever or Mac keyboard, oh my god. I hate refurbishing the keyboard. Oh my god. Like like Miss Matt Lemon said, it's freaking tedious. Okay? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah, I've been getting the kick out of watching her channel. If you've never watched Miss Matt Lemon, you should. She's funny. She really is. She's funny. She's talented. And boy, she loves her Amiga computers. Oh yeah, you can tell that. I think she's got an Amiga 500. she got an Amiga 1200. Um, she's also in the vintage stereo equipment, which I am too. And, uh, and she's all the time like making little gadgets and things, soldering little gadgets and things like that, you know. It's an interesting channel. I think I think I think you people should check it out. If you never watched her channel, I'm giving her a shout out because her channel deserves more uh, more viewers, more subscribers. I think it's it's a good YouTube channel. I really do. Um, yeah. Anyway, enough about Miss Matt Lemon. 
let's talk more about my channel. Okay. Once in a while, I do give shout outs to other YouTube channels of similar content. You know, if I watch some videos and I think they're interesting, you know, I will talk about those videos. In fact, once my channel reaches a thousand subscribers, I'm going to do a celebration video where, where I celebrate reaching my first landmark of 1,000 subscribers. And there's going to be a giveaway. I'm going to give away probably either a Commodore 64 computer or an Amiga computer. I haven't decided yet. Um, and um, I'm going to talk about my own favorite, my favorite YouTube channels about vintage computers and video gaming. And I will talk about why I like those channels. What I think is so cool about them. And of course, Ms. Matt Lemon's YouTube channel will be one of those channels that I talk about. Uh, because there was a few videos that she did that I thought were very unique and very good, very entertaining. I'm not going to spoil it now. I'll just talk about it once I do the the 1,000 subscribers uh, celebration video. That's when I'll talk about what I like about these different YouTube channels that, that I watch. You know, I'll talk about that. But anyway, yeah, getting, uh, getting on with my channel, I have two other channels. I deleted the... Um, the Doom World channel, and I deleted the Jasper's Realm channel, and of course I deleted the Hans Campbell Plays Games channel because it, it was just too much. Okay, it was too much. But I created a YouTube channel. It's called Disc Based Games, and that is where I'm going to put all of my videos as far as video game footage where I record myself playing video games different you know my favorite video games you know you get to watch me play those games and of course I narrate while I'm playing the game I'm talking about different things while I'm playing the game you know so that's where I'm gonna put all of those videos I was gonna put them on this channel I thought no because I don't want those videos competing with the main content of this channel which is about vintage computers and vintage computer software in their original boxes and things like that, you know. So any video game play footage will be on that other channel. It's called Disc Based Games. And there is a link to that channel on the About Me part of this channel. So you can click on that to go to that channel and subscribe if you want to, you know. I'm going to have great content on that channel as well. But I also created a, another YouTube channel about Matchbox vehicles. Yeah. I've always, um, I have always had a fondness for the, like, the Leslie Matchbox vehicles and the King Size vehicles and the Malls of Yesteryears and things like that. And I even buy Matchboxes today, some of the new ones, if I think they're nice looking. And so I'm going to be showing all this stuff on that channel. And it's called Desirable Matchbox. And there's a link to that channel also on the About Me page on this channel. So you can go, you can go visit that channel too. Now I don't have any videos up yet on that channel, but I will. I will. And also I'm thinking about having uh, once a month I'll have races. I'll race all the cars, well, 16 of the cars that I bought for that month, each month. I'll race them at the end of the month. It'll be like a race day, like Matchbox Race Day or, or Race Wear or something, you know. And um, the winning car will be awarded to someone on my that has subscribed to my YouTube channel, okay? Because I'll have, like, different... Uh, promotions and stuff going on on that channel, you know, but yeah, I've always liked Matchbox vehicles, cars and trucks, and I thought it'd be kind of fun to have a YouTube channel about Matchbox, you know, I think, I think it'd be kind of fun to have something like that, yeah, but anyway, I don't want to bore you guys, I think this video's getting too long as it is, but I thought I'd sit down and chit-chat with you guys a little bit, tell you what's up, 
you know, and you're not going to see me on this channel until the end of January or somewhere in in February. That's when it gets warm enough out here in the shop for me to come out here and do these videos. Because right now it gets down into the freezing. It really does. And being an old man, 62, going on 63 years old, I can't take that temperature anymore like I used to. So please forgive me for that. But don't worry. I've got a lot of videos planned for next year. In fact, I think, uh, as, as I was telling my friend Sean, um, next year is going to actually be a lot better than this year, this past year, as far as the video content. It's going to be really good. It really will. Uh, but, yeah. Anyway, I, I want to show you guys this case that, that I just got in, well, I recently got in from, from eBay talk about a little bit. Not eBay, uh, Goodwill, my Goodwill. Local Goodwill for 50 bucks. A $300 case for 50 bucks. Brand new in the box. Oh yeah. <laughs> I want to show you guys this. And talk to you a little bit about what's going on. Uh, but anyway, my name is Hans George Campbell. And until next time.